Here's my pitch. <laughs> um, if we get a bunch of patrons telling us to do an episode on the Human Centipede trilogy, I will force my sister to rewatch one and two and then watch number three for the first time. Yeah, because I never uh, watched number three. <laughs> <laughs> because I got so mad at the second one. Um, and I'm gonna force her to listen to my uh, my theory that the uh, the human centipede triptych is actually a beautiful work of uh, abstract art. Okay, that's that's from yeah. So if you want to hear my <laughs> thesis on why human centipede is art, real art, uh, check us out on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with Incident in Ghostland until then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Spoiler Cast, the show where we talk about movies and we don't care about spoiling them, because it's the Spoiler Cast. And today we're talking about an old movie, so we can spoil it properly, I think. But yes, um, it's, it's four years old, so yeah, if you yeah. haven't seen it by now, you should. Spoiler! Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler! Uh, yes, uh, my name is Tobias, as always. With me is my sister and trusted co-host, uh, Rebecca. Hello. Well. Hello. <laughs> I just wanna, just wanna make you aware uh, that if you if you like the show, if you're if you're a listener, if you're a watcher here on YouTube or a listener on any other platform, um, uh, we are available. Uh, there's an extra episode every week available um, on Patreon.com/slash Don't Make a Scene. There will be a link down below in the link tree. Um, so if you want to support us and get that extra episode, plus a bunch of other exclusives every um, uh, week. Well, not every week, but... Uh, every month, at least. Uh, every month. Um, you can subscribe on our Patreon for just $3 a month. That's that's the most. That's the one where you get the most bang for your buck, so to speak. But there are more tiers. Yeah, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, we're going to get into... Uh, the the discussion of the day or yes. of the week, I suppose, which is, um, well, I was, it's about two movies, but we're gonna focus on one of them more, I think. Yes, we're talking about Ghostland or Incident in a Ghostland. I'm not sure actually what the movie's called. According to the IMDb <laughs> I'm seeing, <laughs> no? it's called Incident in a Ghostland in Sweden, but original title is just Ghostland. Yeah, and. Same here for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sometimes we see different things. Yeah, and in the movie, the only title we see, I think, is Incident in a Ghostland in the yeah. beginning. But I'm thinking... there isn't one at the end, right? No, I don't think so. I'm yeah. thinking it's called Ghostland only in America, perhaps, and then Incident in a Ghostland is like a European thing, maybe? Well, there's the whole... We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, we should, we should say what the movie's about. It's about um, this uh, this writer... Um, something Keller, Beth. Beth Keller. She's basically like Stephen King. She writes uh, um, page turners, Shoskvelter, as they're yeah. called in Sweden. Um, horror. horror, horror novels that are super popular. And she's finishing up her last, or not last, but her latest book, based on a traumatic experience from her uh, childhood, where her, 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 she and her sister and her mother were attacked in their new home. Um, by two by two crazies that yes. tried to murder and rape them, um, and uh, in the middle of this, well, the book is kind of it's finished basically. Um, yeah. The release party is imminent, but just as all this is happening, she gets a call from her sister um, that she has to go. She, she must come and help her, and the sister, for some reason, still lives in the house where they were attacked with the mother, because um, the sister's kind of you know she's. Uh, She's kind of in a not catatonic state, but she's kind of she kind of well, stuck. Yeah, she's she's stuck. Yeah, in the past. Yeah, I suppose. And uh, it seems it well, it, but but it, it, it seems like there's more going on than than that. She's only like dreaming these things that there yeah. might actually be ghosts uh, around. I won't say more right now <laughs> for this opening part. Maybe we'll have like more of a spoiler. Section a little bit later. Yeah, we or can we'll, we'll, we can try we'll, and do it that way at least because yeah. this is a movie that both of us definitely recommend. If yes. you haven't seen well, it yet, you should see it. Uh, I yeah, because we saw this in the cinema back in 2018. Yes, I don't know if it was just before or after Hereditary, but it was the same summer. I, I think, think it was, was before. before. Yeah. 
Uh, and yeah, we were both completely sold on it. Oh yes. Um, at that because it, it, it's written and directed by Pascal Logier, um, mm-hmm. and at this point, I had not seen Martyrs. I think I had, though I did not know it was the same person who had no. made them. I wasn't aware of that, but I, I had <laughs> seen Martyrs years before that. <laughs> yeah, but I, th- I think I have to because I made the connection between Martyrs and this, or you I might did. have just. Yeah, I must have seen it then because I did the connection. Yeah, I don't think I watched Martyrs and did the connection after that. Either way, um, and we, we like we said, we both loved it back in twenty eighteen. Um, and you <laughs> you messaged me earlier today and like this is a goddamn masterpiece. Uh, yeah, so I'm, guessing, I'm guessing you still love it. Oh yes, I was uh, rewatching it today. Though weirdly enough, I haven't rewatched it in years. Me neither. Might I've be seen because it, it is after this quite horrible. The story. Yeah. Yeah. But watching it, I had like butterflies and, and goosebumps, <sighs> and like, it was so fantastically made. I was just, oh my God. I was trying to work <laughs> at the same time. It wasn't possible. Not at all. <laughs> so it's a weird feeling to have I know, butterflies I know. when you're watching this movie. It's I think so it was horrific. the excitement, I think. Probably. Okay, okay, I hope. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just weird uh, as well. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I hadn't seen it either probably since because i have it on blu-ray i got it for christmas probably 2018 yeah uh from a friend um so i've, I've probably haven't but i haven't rewatched it I, probably since then like early 2019 probably yeah because I, I watched through the, all the uh, uh bonus features so i probably saw the movie then so I, but i still haven't done see, seen it in about three years um i think i'm, I'm always a little like when there's a movie that I I think I really like, I'm always kind of like apprehensive to go go back and watch it because may, maybe it's, maybe I won't like it this time. Yeah. Because <laughs> perfect example of that is uh, Avatar. The first time I saw Avatar back in 2009 in the cinema, I was like, oh my god, it's a masterpiece. So I, I bought the super duper collection on Blu-ray and everything. Um, but each time I watched it after that, I was like, well, this. It's, it's just good, but I mean, this isn't as good as it was before. Maybe I saw it in the theater and everything. And then, I think I've seen the movie like four times. I saw it in a f- four times in pretty rapid succession. And by the fourth time, I was like, this movie isn't that good. <laughs> There's something wrong with this movie. I don't want, I don't like it anymore. And so like after that, I'm like, I don't want to watch... Unless it's a movie that I know I like absolutely fucking love. I try to stay away from rewatching movies too much. <laughs> well, yeah, because... You, if you want to watch them, you you have to watch them to experience them properly. Yeah. And yeah, you, you run the risk of have having changed your mind regarding things. Or, or, or discovering something you didn't notice before. Yeah. And like, ugh, ugh. Yeah, um, I mean, I did discover one thing about Incident in a Ghost Band that I was like, this, this is cheap. And it was some of the sound effects. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I still like it, but I do like it less. I still love the connection between this and Martyrs and oh, yeah. the director of the both. Uh, but the movie in and of itself, yeah, it has problems. Sound effects are one. Mm-hmm. Um, the goddamn jump scares. Yeah, there's the a few thing. of them. I was like, stop. No, it's don't. too much. Mm-hmm. Too much. Too much. Some of them uh, felt like it wasn't the director's choice. It was the like the producer. Like, no, you need to have a jump scare here. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Because they felt like popcorn scares, basically. Like you know, yeah, the cheap ones, the really cheap ones. Um, but I mean, I don't. I don't think this. I don't think that he had much studio interference in making this movie. Oh, well, maybe not. And it does the, feel the third... more like a, a Hollywood esque thing sometimes. Oh, it, it is a Hollywood. I don't. I mean, it's a, it's an American production. It's not Canadian or French, like his like Martyrs was. Um, but the third thing also is that. Uh, this is like only a second movie uh, that he's written in English, and you can definitely tell because the dialogue is atrocious well, from time to time. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> he can't write in English. I'm sorry. <laughs> like c- comparing the dialogue in Martyrs to this is like day and night. Yeah, but uh, in my opinion, I'm I'm willing to give him the, a pass on that one. To be honest. Yeah, sure. And like I said. The, these faults, they don't ruin the movie. It's just that I picked up on them more. Because I remember I made a video review or video essay about this movie way back in 2018. Or, yeah, 2018. 
and I pointed these things out then as well, but, you know, I was so uh, uh, taken aback by the movie overall, so it didn't, it didn't bother me. This time, though, because I was prepared, you know, I knew the movie and everything, it did bother me a little bit more, but I still like the movie a lot. Um, Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what I like is... It, it, it is... Uh, the themes mm-hmm. or the theme of the movie, the story of the movie, yeah, um, and, and how it how it, it it connects so well to Martyrs, um, and how those two movies form like a um, uh, there it's this look into the writers, uh, writer and director in this case, um, into his uh, like state Mind? of being at the time of writing yeah. the movies. Um, which, which, like in and of itself, then as a viewing experience, eh, I mean, yeah, it's it's a pretty good horror movie. But I, I, I think to really, really appreciate it, you have to watch Martyrs, and you have to know who, like, what the writer went through in making those two movies. I, I don't know if I agree on that. I think okay. Incident in the Ghostland, the the story in just that movie is. It's well good, written you know. enough yeah. and well played out enough and well planned enough to be so exciting specifically the first time you see it i mean when you've seen it once or twice the twist is kind of ruining it if you already mm. know it but you know watching it a few years later it's like when when does it come when is it i'm just <laughs> waiting for it like, what happens so it was it was still very exciting <laughs> sure but i still sure. i still feel like the story is it's so well made and still very unique because I don't feel like I've seen a lot of movies do it this way. Not not this way. Yeah, it's that 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 element of of storytelling. Yeah. Uh, like literally storytelling in the movie being uh, being an escape. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and and how that ties into uh, uh, storytelling being escapism in 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 reality. Yeah. So to speak. Um, but other than that, it's pretty cliche. You have like the the the, the crazy. First of all, the the crazy transvestite, which is a kind of a, yeah, a dated a and I guess somewhat problematic trope nowadays. Uh, and yes. Then the, and then the big guy is like the obvious, like uh, like deformed hillbilly character. Yeah. How they they kidnap little girls to do horrific things to them. It's it's pretty straightforward that way. Sure. And I I, I but I I think that kind of I think that's uh, what's it called. He did that on purpose. It's um, whatever it's called. He did. He wrote that on purpose, like make it a it was, a cliche yeah. to, to, to to make it basic, sort of. Yeah. So so you would think this is oh, it's just another one of those movies, and yeah. then it turns into something else. Deliberately, he wrote that deliberately. <laughs> That's the word you were looking God for. God <laughs> damn it! I hate when that happens. Yeah, deliberately. It was a deliberate choice to make it kind of. Yeah, basic, recognizable. Yeah. Um. So it's it's a, it's um, it's something we've seen before in horror movies, but he wanted to change that basically with the the twist of the the storytelling thing. Yeah. Because what happens in the movie is, um, the two sisters are attacked. The mother manages to uh, to overpower, um, uh, the transvestite or the the trans person. I'm not sure. The, um, the other dude, <laughs> the other yeah. one. Well, yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, they uh, they managed to escape because, like, like, to, uh, like, you know what? The IMDb text kind of explains it really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, a mother, a mother of two, who inherits a house, is confronted with oh. murderous intruders on the first night in their new home and fights for her daughter's lives. Sixteen years later, when the daughters reunite at the house, things get really weird. Oh, so they okay, survive. Yeah. The one of the sisters move out and get on with her life. 16, year, 16 years later, she gets a phone call from yeah. her sister. Uh, Beth gets a phone call from Vera, who is freaking out over, yeah. like, they're still in the house. They're here. She's like, okay, I'm going to go visit. And yeah, then... that, that's the thing. That's the thing also. The movie starts with them as children. Yes. And that's when we get the title card, Incident in a Ghostland, which is the name of the book. Yes. Why I think, uh, why you know, so we, we're supposed to see that as, because she, she then wakes up, like, literally 20 minutes into the movie, where the inciting incident is supposed to happen in script formatting. Yeah. Um, literally, like, I, I checked, it was like 19 minutes and 40-something seconds into the movie. She wakes up as an adult and like, oh, it was just a nightmare, it was just a nightmare. Yeah. 
Um, and then she's sitting down to finish up Incident in the Ghostland, the book she's writing now, Beth uh, Keller, the, the author. Mm-hmm. Um, but then another like half hour later, we 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 are we're when she has been visiting her mom and her sister, um, it we realize that the, the, the nightmare was actually reality. Yeah, and Beth, as a little girl, what twelve or something, she must yeah. be fifteen. No, she gets a period. Yeah, sixteen 13, years 14. later, and she's about yeah, she's thirteen at most probably. Yeah, well, the movie kind of starts with her getting her period. So yeah, well, you can and get it's the first earlier. time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's around th- puberty, so yeah. 12, 13, 14, yeah. Something like that. Either way, either way. Um, uh, she, 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 she realized that she is... Wakes up, so to speak. Yeah, and she has been in like a catatonic state for days, um, where she dreamt that she escaped, and she grew up, and she had a career, and she got married, and had a ch- child, and... She but literally something... escaped into her mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because we see that in the beginning of the movie, she likes to write stories. She's a fan of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. Yeah. She starts with a, a quote by Lovecraft and then like a, a pull quote by that character before we know who she is. That he's so cool. <laughs> yeah. so weird. Um, yeah, but because she, li- she likes to write stories. She wants to be a writer when she grows up. So that's why she, that's why, what she dreamed about, you know, when she was, she was escaping reality. Um, and the, the whole thing where the grown-up Vera, then her sister, um, constantly saying like, "You, you can't see me, you can't see me," and they're still in the house, and she, she's like beating herself up. That's reality, like pushing its way into the dream. Yeah. Uh, uh, Beth's dream. So, she, so whenever, whenever Vera is talking to adult Beth, she's actually talking to young Beth. Which th- I didn't quite get that the first time I watched it. This time I was like, oh, I'm. Now it makes sense. So the so the the ghosts in the ghost land is actually the real characters, mm-hmm. the real murderers and and you know, attackers or invaders yeah. in, in the story. Um, but she wakes up and she's like, at first she's like, obviously she gets angry. Like, why did you wake me up? I was having like I was fine in the dream. But the thing is, like living a dream, eventually you know it's it, it can't last forever. Also, Vera wakes her up. When the intruders have, they're they're done with Vera, and she's like, they're gonna come for you now. Yeah, you need to you need to realize that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but and and then she, you know, b- because because she has lived basically an entire life as as adult Beth. Um, she she has some because she has something to fight for. That's yeah. why she like. Immediately sets in sets a plan in motion to get out of there. While Beth, who has basically been no, covering f- Vera, uh, Vera has been covering for her sister for well a few it, days at least. It, it must be like a few days because we see the mother's corpse and she's not like rotten or anything, but no. she is pale and they so do, she's dead. They do talk I mean, she's about been dead for a while. They do talk like uh, the police officers mention later that the, the yeah mention later that that. Uh, I think they say, like, Janet at the gas station. She remembers them. Mm. She saw them yeah. just a couple of days ago or something. Yeah, so they haven't been stuck that long. But, I mean, long enough. <laughs> I mean, um, when some, something like that happens, it probably feels like long enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so so Beth, fucking goddammit. Vera, who has been stuck in in uh, in reality. Yes. Yeah, she's been covering up. So she's, she is, she's got the brunt of the beating in the... The other stuff probably. Um, she she is kind of conformed to that way of living though. Yeah, because everything's fine, you know. Because they get candy to eat. It's a, it's this weird like the 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 attackers kind of want to create some sort of family or something. They have these yeah these dolls that that the big guy can like play with but the real people and they keep feeding the children candy cuz kids love candy you know it's it's this weird like twisted version of a family unit yeah as long uh, as the, also... the young girls are like doll like just sitting yeah. there and taking whatever happens they won't get hurt too bad probably yeah yeah, yeah. but then and you know the, yeah and then so we see we see uh, Vera just stuffing your face with candy like like 
gleefully kind of eating the can like everything's everything's fine you know yeah. whenever they're not here we're fine you know and when they do um, come just be quiet and do what they say basically. yeah exactly so so she she has been kind of beaten down basically by mm-hmm. by by reality while beth then is hell-bent on escaping because you know she sees this bright future yeah that she knows that there's you know there is something else and she also she hasn't she she's been able to be- because she escaped in this fantasy world, she shielded herself from the horrors of reality. Also, so I don't. She think... hasn't conformed to it. She, she, she like um like Stockholm syndrome hasn't set in yet, so to speak. Also, it's because she hasn't had too much bad stuff happen to her yet. She's only been a captive, so to speak. Because uh, in the first day when they attack, like you mentioned, Beth gets her period, and the big guy doesn't like the smell of that. No, so he doesn't so want to he, touch her at first. Yeah. So she gets she gets off easy, so to say, in the beginning. In the beginning, yeah. yeah. But then, you know, like I said, Vera's like, well, they're going to come for you now because they're done with me. Yeah. And that's when she's going to experience the horrible, the real horrible shit. But yeah, she's like, nah, I'm not doing so, that. So they decide to escape. Yes. Uh, or they manage to escape. Um, uh, which, for a while, almost feels like they're like, they're... It's the classic. They get away, but they're gonna get captured just like five minutes later. The, you know the classic trope yeah. in movies. And here, they're playing with that because first, like they get away, they run the entire night. They manage to stop a cop car when they get out to the road, and the cops actually help them. Um, so when you're like, when's the bad guys gonna come and shoot the cops? It's it's not it, when and, oh oh it's not gonna happen. And if you look at <gasps> the safe. timer. There's like twenty yeah. minutes left, on or something. Yeah, so you're like, yeah, they're something safe. Something else should happen, but this is basically the end. Are they going to be fine? They're going to be fine, and then the cops get shot. You're like, yes, no! at the last second, <laughs> <laughs> they get dragged back into the house. But if you pay attention, the cops, since they spent so much time with the cops on the road, one of the police officers had time to call it in and say like send units to the house we'll take them to the yeah. hospital because everyone when they mentioned uh, auntie whatever yeah everyone kind of <laughs> knew what house that was and then again yeah. they talked to the lady at the gas station she was like yeah i know the girls i know who they so are they, they know the house yeah so they said they managed to send cops there before the, they get killed so they get back to the house there's a scuffle and right when the big guy is about to kill uh, beth by Choking her, her he, yeah. He, yeah, he gets shot by a cop. And she's like, oh. And he shoots the other one. And they're safe. Oh. The movie ends, like, somewhat in, with a happy ending. Yeah. They get saved. They, they're they put into ambulances and they get rescued. Yeah. Which is, first of all, very different from a lot of horror movies uh at that time, or like in general, yes. in the two like, thousands, it's always the you know the switcheroo ending where, like, wait, haha, you thought you were safe, but you're not. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's Saw, it's uh, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, it's uh, fucking Insidious. Insidious has kind of a kind of uh, a nice ending, but it's you know followed up with what happens later. Yeah, even a lot of the mainstream movies likes to like you know give you that one last scare and like haha, you're never safe. But this one, they are safe. They got away. Which I like. <laughs> oh, yes. I fucking love that. And it's also contrast to what happens in, in Martyrs than his his first. Yes. Well, yes. his other big horror movie. Yeah. Um. But the, the, the when the movie ends, you're still a little bit like... Because there's like three, four minutes left. And you're like, the movie got to end now, right? And then... The last, like, when you're like, there might be faking out is when the ambulances drive away. Um, and the EMT guy, he says, so we're about 30 to 40 minutes away from the hospital. So in the meantime, you're stuck with me. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, he's just kidding. Huh. Yeah, he's just trying um, to make small talk. Yeah. And he asks, like, you're, he says, like, you're really strong, Beth. Do you play any sports? He's like, no, I'm not into that, huh? Uh, I would have lost that, but he says. And then she turns to him, basically looking at the audience and says, I like to write stories. Yeah. And like, ooh, oh. Because, you know, if you, and, and on, on its own, it's like, okay, yeah, the, you know, the the the, the power of storytelling is basically what saved yes. her. But if you've seen Martyrs and you know, um, 
the situation Pascal Logier was in when he wrote Martyrs. Um, Back in 2008. 2008, probably wrote in like 2006, 2007. It makes so much more sense because, and this is where the the big thing comes, this is also kind of funny that he made it exactly 10 years later after Martyrs. Martyrs is a super cold, bleak, horrific, like, inhuman movie. It's like, it's devoid of any, like, light or joy or anything. It's it's one of the worst experiences you can have watching a movie in a good way because it's still yeah. a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. Um, and I mean, it it basically ends. This I guess this is a spoiler for a, 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 a martyrs a fi- as well. Almost, oh, yeah, almost uh, almost fifteen year old movie, but still, martyrs is basically about life is suffering all the way up to the end. And when you're finally going to be rid of all the suffering, there's nothing on the other side. Yeah. It all just ends. There's darkness, nothing, and you've lived a whole life in vain, basically. Basically. Yeah, and, and Pascal Logier, he wrote that movie in a state of, like, clinical depression. Like, you know, you know, like, bordering on suicide. That's why the movie is so horrible, because he had no joy. He was just like, he, he just wanted, he poured his soul onto that movie. Which, and, um, as an adult, you can definitely see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I was like, too young when I watched it the first time, so I did not realize that. Yeah. Um, cause it, 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 there's no, there's no empathy to any of the characters. Like, oh, oh, you were, you were, you were, you know, uh, tortured and, and pr- in prison and tortured as a child. Doesn't matter. We're going to kill you in the end. Very unceremoniously. Yeah. Ooh, you, you're the sort of good, uh, protagonist slash heroine who tries to do the right thing. Ah, doesn't matter. We're going to beat you up for months and then we're going to cut your skin off. Like, uh, it's the most, ho- <laughs> oh, you, you've been imprisoned for so long that you can't speak. You've had nails shoved into your head and... You've been driven insane so that you think there are bugs crawling all over you and you want to cut them off with a knife. Eh, we're just going to shoot you in the head the first second you try to try to escape. Yeah. Like, it's... Uh, it's the most, like, horrific thing. It's one of the... It's, I've seen a lot of weird movies and, like, disgusting, disturbing movies. This is not... Martyrs is not the goriest. It's not the... The most, the scariest, but no. it is by far the most like disturbing movie. It is yes. disgusting, but it has a point. That's the thing. It's not like Hostel, where it's just you know torturing because ugh, torturing is gross. And no, we want to see these people suffer. It's more about like there's a, there's a there's a reason for the characters to suffer in that movie, even though that the reason in the end, turns out to be kind of pointless. And also, it's kind of a stupid reason to yeah. torture people but at least for that it's information. Not, at least it's not just, like... They're sleazy. not just doing it for fun. They're doing it yeah. for experimentation. And it's and, it, and it's not the audience watching, like, Friday the 13th and yell, yeah, cut the uh, head no. off. Like, no, it's... 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 It's, uh, it's only displayed as something horrific. I mean, yeah. it's not displayed as something... It, becomes horrific because it's so inhuman and so like detached the way the movie plays out also makes it kind of difficult to understand what actually is going on and what actually happened to this yeah. this young lady who's the the what's it called the main the character but the um yeah. lucy right yeah lucy she's the yeah. the first girl so to speak yeah so you you're kind of like in a state of has anything actually happened? What the hell is going on? Yeah, and when we find out, we realize that there is like a, a like a, an like insane a, group of of old people. It's who, like a cult or something. A cult who wants to know what's you know what what what's what's on the other side. What happens when we die? Basically, they, yeah. Even though you know, if you believe in that stuff, you'll you'll find out when you die. That's the whole point. Thing is, but they, they want to know, know beforehand. Now. Yeah, <laughs> they want to prepare or something. And they they believe that there's something there because they've seen, you know, basically the thousand yard stare that people get when they're, uh, you know, yeah. when, when life when life gets too hard. <laughs> Sorry, um, they believe though that that thousand yard stare means that you've seen something beyond you know beyond life. Um, but so they've they, never been able to to 
get someone to tell them what they actually saw. Yeah, but for for years, um, they have been kidnapping and torturing, uh, uh, like systematically torturing, especially then young women. Of course, they realize that young women are more likely to They're experiment. Yeah. The they call it transition or something. Yeah, um, but also because you know that's the worst kind of other than children. Like women is of course the most. You, you, it feels more bad when women yeah. are being. Especially Violated young like women. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what has been going on with Lucy. And then when her friend... Anna. Anna? Uh, she gets captured, of course. And the, the, the same done to her. And it's not even like... that. That's the thing also. It's not like super like gross. Like, oh, we're going to pull your... Pull your nails out, or we're gonna, you know, uh, like cut your your Achilles tendon, like that that kind of like gruesome stuff. No, she just gets like beaten up. Like they they beat her for months. They um they they cut her hair. They feed her this disgusting slop. Yeah. She, she they they chain her to the wall. Um, they want to. I guess they want to make her submissive, sort of. Yeah, they want to completely break her down. Yeah. So that so that like she's she's within an inch of her life. And, you know, they actually... (laughs) Well, they tried a few different ways, according to the movie. Yeah. Her way is just the one that happens to work the best, apparently. Yeah. Because they do have other victims that we see. They've been living in the state longer and they've been... They've been tortured in other ways. Yeah. They've tried different ways and they've become more... uh, uh, um, their style has become more effective. Yes. It's less messy. That's yes. that's why it's very clinical in this the, the final stages. Um but it, actually if you want like a, a concise explanation, there is an American remake from twenty fifteen. Right. Now, that's a horrible, horrible movie. <laughs> it's and not like because it's gruesome, no, because it's, just, it's bad. just bad. It's poorly made. And they come they don't completely miss the point of the movie, but they miss the point of the violence. They miss the point of the pain being caused in a martyrs. That the whole point of the movie is that the suffering is what brings on this altered state of being. So in that movie, it's just, you know, oh, they get captured and imprisoned and we don't see Poor the you. violence. <laughs> the, the whole point is to see the vi to to, to the violence has to both affect the characters in the movie, but also the the the, uh, the audience. Yeah. And if if we don't see the violence, we don't understand what they're going through. So not showing the violence, which that's what happens in the remake, it completely like the the point is lost, and it just feels like gross. Um, but but I was gonna say. They explain the experiment better in the American version. Because they actually say that um, the, the ones that they call the martyrs, the ones who can see what's on, you know, beyond, beyond life, mm. they, um, they basically, they're, they're stronger than a regular person. Because even when they, they're basically dead, they keep on living. Yes. Uh, like physically, like they, they just won't die because, you know, their, their willpower is too strong. They're meant. They can be mentally broken down, but physically they're still alive. So that there is this. They're, you know, quasi dead. They're both. They're both in the land of the living and the land of the dead, basically. Yeah. Well, they're in limbo. Which they <laughs> don't explain as clearly in the French movie. I think that's the only thing the remake does better. I mean, I they mean, they do, do explain it in the French, but it's hard to explain when you're recapping the movie. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um. So that's watching what happens. it, you kind of understand it. Huh? Watching the French one, you do understand it. Yes, you the do understand the, it. The way the Mademoiselle just... explains it to Anna is like, ah, okay, yeah. yeah. Now we see what you're doing. Not sure why, but you know. Yeah. So, so they they do this. They 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 beat her. They 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 cut off her hair. So they also like me- mentally just uh, uh, like, like embarrass her basically. Yeah. Um, make make her make, they they don't take off her clothes. So she has to like go to the bathroom through her clothes. Yeah. Um, they just, like you know, chain her to the wall. They they don't talk to her. It's it's you know it's complete this sick stuff basically. And yeah. towards the end, towards the end, then the the final step is they literally skin her alive. I think that's the new version they're trying on her. Yeah, to like have this like because. You can't if you pull the skin off a person, they will die. The the pain is too much. The thing yeah. is, she doesn't die because she's a martyr. Exactly. 
So when 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 they're finally done with the skinning, she enters that state of you know she she gets the the look the thousand yard stare. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh my god! They put her in some sort of liquid to like keep her alive. And Better. then the mademoiselle <laughs> goes down to talk to her, and we don't we see her lips move, but we can't hear what Anna is saying. We, we see the mademoiselle reacting to it a little yeah. bit though. She's a nice and then detail. The rest, then the rest of the cult arrives, and they're like, oh, and they're explained like she she was. She was in that altered state for like two hours. She stopped talking now, but Mademoiselle will retell what she heard. Yeah. Um, and she's she's sitting in a bathroom. This old guy who explained everything to the, the crowd goes up to her. Oh, are you ready? And she's sitting there. She's removing all her makeup, taking off her fucking hat slash wig thing. Yeah. Um, and she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll be done in a second. And then she, when he goes to leave, she asks for him again, whatever his name is. Blah, 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 Etienne, I think it is. Etienne, right. Etienne. Um, and just, like... She says something about, could, like, could you do it or something? Yeah. I, I didn't pick that up for some reason. But she mentioned no, she, something that makes him stop and, like, what do you mean? And then yeah. you hear a gunshot. Yeah, exactly. She she, she talks about, do, do you... Basically, like, do you... Do you she, what she says is... You don't want to know what's on the other side. Oh, yeah, maybe shoots, that's what she, she says. She puts a gun in her mouth, basically. And the movie ends. So, my interpretation is always that there is nothing on the other side. They've been torturing uh, women for years, only to find out that there is nothing. Well, if, because if there was nothing, I don't think she would kill herself. I think what's on, what what he's trying to say is that what what's beyond is worse than you could ever imagine. But then, why would she kill herself? Because she doesn't. She, gonna... she doesn't want to tell them what it is. She'd rather just because you don't. You don't really experience it, obviously, because when you die, you die. It's only oh. if you're a martyr that you experience it. So oh, yes. she's like, I... okay, well, I don't even want to try and get any of this explaining or whatever, and she kills herself instead, I suppose. But yeah, I like always... you said, also, why I would always you interpreted die, like like. All, all these years of, of waiting for, you know, finding out what's beyond beyond there, and it turns out that there's nothing. Because we do get sort of a glimpse of it. I mean, we um, get a light. <laughs> yeah, they zoom into Anna's eyes, and there, there's a light. But we don't see anything, there's just a light. Yeah. You um, know, like the light at the end of the tunnel or something. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah horrific or nihilistic enough that the Mademoiselle just shoots herself in the head. Yeah. And then the movie just ends. Because, yeah. Because that's basically what Pascal Langer wanted to say back then. Like, there's nothing. There's no uh, point. Just fucking yeah, yeah. whatever. There's no, there no point to life, basically. Yeah. Um, It's kind of funny also. The guy who did all the... Um, speaking of how, how, how nihilistic the movie was. The guy who did all the makeup effects. There's a lot of, like... Oh, gross, lots of Like, cuts full body and, makeup and, effects. And, yeah. Yeah. He killed himself, like, two days after the movie was finished. Why? Well, because he was there on set to see everything. No, it, it, it was there never, like, confirmed. Well. He, he didn't leave, like, a note saying, like, this movie is fucking terrible or something. But no, because it... Literally, he finished up the movie and then he killed himself. Unless you already are very depressed, I don't yeah. think this movie would make you depressed. No. It's just... Um, it'll make you, like, take a step back. Yes. But, yeah, it won't affect you that much. But, like, if you're... I hate... I won't even say it, but, like... like uh, warning, like, if you're, like, you know, sensitive to stuff like that, do not watch Martyrs. Yeah, because they Jesus do... Jesus Christ. They do show a lot of, like, the they side effects of... everything. Of normal depression and, and yeah. um, clinical, like, sadness. <laughs> like, yeah. the whole experiencing bugs on your skin or imagining a monster chasing you, basically. All the n- normal stuff yeah. that anxiety can bring on. But then they also show, you know, the physical effects on what you might actually do to yourself when you experience these things, which yeah, are which is, the horrible shit. It's a lot, yeah. However... Um, oh, and we didn't even mention the fact that they, they shoot uh, uh, Lucy before she, before she dies. She shoots an entire family in cold blood, yeah. including their, like, teenage children. Because <laughs> the movie is kind of... What we talked about, that's not, like, the entire movie. That's just short of half the movie. Yeah. The entire beginning is about Lucy having escaped from this horrible torture, whatever. Yeah. 
and how she's trying to, first of all, come back into society as a child, and then when she's an adult, reconcile with what happened. Yeah, she's still haunted by it, because she's literally I haunted mean, by the ghost of that other girl she saw when she, she was captured. She left a woman there, because she couldn't. She was a child when she escaped. She was like yeah, 12 when she, she escaped. Yeah, she couldn't have done anything. She couldn't know. have done anything, but she's haunted by the fact that she left someone to die so that's, there. So that's why she's trying to find the people who did this, so she can kill them and kind of let that spirit or, you know, her, her yeah. mental ghosts uh, have some peace. Uh, but that never happens. It literally ends with her, her, her demons, so to speak, killing her. Yeah. She slits her wrists and dies. No, oh, she slits her throat. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. First, first wrist. the wrist, so that's and too then slow. So she cuts her throat. Yeah, like yeah. Not like, so. There's no like. There's there's no no respite for her even when she did the thing she was supposed to do. No, it doesn't help. She dies anyway. Yeah. Everyone just dies. No one has any, uh, you know, re- resolution or you know. There's there's like we said zero happiness. There's yeah. just darkness in that movie. Um, and Pascal Ocher said that, like, if he hadn't written that movie, he probably would have killed himself. It's because it was it was a way to express his ex- yeah and get that stuff out of him yeah. a little bit. Um, which is also probably then why the actresses, the two uh, adult actresses who plays the the adult uh, characters, Mojana Aloui and Milene Jean Ponoir. I'm not sure how yeah, to exactly. pronounce their names. Yeah, Anna and Lucy. <laughs> yeah, they they vowed never to work with him again because he was probably not a fun person to be around during the making of the movie. No, I can see how making that movie would have probably been pretty disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Though, should note that uh, the girl who played Anna, she has done more horror films at least. So she wasn't completely ruined. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm... Yeah, both of them worked. I think. Um... She kind of, she seems to have stopped in 2017. But no, you know, she last movie she's uh, credited as is uh, from 2021. Oh, okay. I thought there was one of them who kind of quit. That a, might a few, have been uh, Anna. A while after that, though, but but still. Um, yeah, Anna did her last thing in um, 2017. There's one after, but that's not dated. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's in production. Or something. So she might actually still be doing stuff, but for a while there she stopped. Either way, um, moving forward though, like yes, ten years forward, uh, and Pascal Ogier, he does, he he doesn't do a lot, but he does some stuff. Um, he does, he, he gets to go to America to make the Tall Man, um, which we will talk about in this uh, in the next uh, Patreon episode, which comes yes. out on Monday the twenty fifth. 25th of, of uh, April 2022. <laughs> so if you want to hear us talk about uh, The Tall Man, uh, uh, subscribe to the Patreon. Yes. Um, so he did that, and then he did one episode of a TV show, one uh, music video, and then he did Ghostland, Incident in Ghostland. So he did basically nothing for 10 years. Yeah. One movie, more or less. Um, what, before he returned to you know the similar kind of stuff that goes on in Martyrs. Which is Ghostland then? Yes, but where where Martyrs is super bleak and horrific and dark and detached and inhuman, um, like we mentioned, Ghostland has that. Of course, yeah. it's very horrific and it's very very violent. So violent that one of the actors has got seventy stitches in her face. Oh right. Yeah. Um. Uh. One who plays the uh, the young Vera. Uh. She's like. Her head got smashed through a, a glass door. Taylor Hickson, uh, yeah, 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 which is horrible. I, I I knew of her before, and I was yeah, and I knew she had a scar on her cheek. And I was like, oh, that was from that movie, Jesus Christ. Um. Uh, but yeah. However, that movie ends. Uh, ha- it it has a happy ending, like we mentioned before, because in this movie they don't all die; they get away. They say, you know, they, they survive. They kill the demons they, that, 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 that tries to keep them, you know, locked up in the house and torture them and rape them. Yeah. And in the end, Beth, you know, Beth, of course, as we mentioned, she escapes into the stories in her head to get away from all the horrible stuff. Almost like, you know, writing a script. And, we can you know, almost... Making a movie about it. Yeah, so, we can uh, almost uh, assume that she will when she's out of this... 
thing, she will yeah. write it down and make that book that she dreamed exactly. of. Much like And I mean, like we said Pascal before, earlier, <laughs> the movie literally ends by Beth, uh, in the voice of the writer of the script, turning to the camera and saying, I like to write stories. Yeah. When the, when the guy asks how she made it out. Yeah. Because that's literally what Pascal did. He, he wrote, wrote a story... story he wrote Martyrs to get out of killing himself, and now he kind of he's he's writing uh, Ghostland is is his way of of uh, basically explaining that. Yeah, that that telling stories is what saved his life, and I think that's uh, has a it has a very nice meta textual quality to the movie. Yes, without being pretentious. <laughs> oh yeah, it's there's not an ounce. Uh, if anything, it, yeah, it's a little too cliche. <laughs> a little bit the, of you points. Know, oh, the crazy tranny and you know the ugly deformed man who wants to you know the pig man s- almost. Yeah, the pig. Yeah, exactly. Who's just grunting and he uh, you know he he sniffs panties because he's gross. You know, it's super cliche that way. Yeah, it's like a seventies movie, seventies horror movie. Um. But then there is that added level of of uh, uh, the, the the theme of the movie. Yes. Um. So that's why that's why I like why why I like Ghostland. <laughs> sure, like I said, on a su- on a, on the surface level, not I don't think it's great anymore. I, th- I still like it, but it's like I it's, still you know. I still think it's great. I think there's like. I mean, yeah, the dialogue is a bit odd at at points. I mean, first of all, there's not a lot of. Sp- speaking except for in the the dream sequences when um with adult beth and then yeah. the ghost of her mother i suppose yeah but then the mother is some is she's part french at least because she speaks french she's french she's a french pop artist oh yeah Farmer. that's the no one but music i mean like video. The, the character not the oh actress. yeah the character is also yeah, french probably like some... french american or something yeah you know. um so I, I can kind of excuse some of the language yeah, like I said, he's only written one movie before in English. Yeah. So it's gonna, it's like um, uh, fuck, what's the guy's name? He made uh, he made he's, he's an Iranian. Well, he's 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 English Iranian, but he's he grew up speaking Iranian, Ira- Iranian, Iranian, <laughs> Iranian, whatever. He's saying. Ira- from, uh, whatever. From he's from Iran. Iran. Yeah, and he made the movie um, uh, Under the Shadow. Have you seen that one? Not sure. I have. The one where a mother and a daughter is living in, um, they're living in uh, Tehran in the eighties during the uh, the war, and a missile crashes into their house where they're living. It doesn't explode, but it's just sitting there, uh, one floor above them. It's a it's an apartment complex. Oh yeah, I've heard and, of it, but I don't think I've seen it. Yeah, through the crack in the in the roof, uh, uh, like a spirit or demon get, you know, makes its way into their house. It's it's called Under the Shadow, and the guy who wrote it and directed it called is called Babak Anvari. It is. That's another amazing um, modern horror movie. Um, one of my favorites. But that was that was like his first big movie. So then he got a chance, of course, to do something in America a few years later, because that's what they do, you know, in Hollywood. Like they find, uh, you know, what's it called talent. Yeah. And bring bring them in. New talent. So he got to make a movie for Netflix, or at least it was released on Netflix, called uh. Wounds. Oh yeah, which which uh, starring uh, Army Arm Hammer, Hammer. And Zazzy Beats, um, which he directed and uh, co-wrote, and even though he had like gone to school in America and everything, he you know he's he's an Iranian speaking person. That's like his his English uh, isn't his uh, first language. No, that's his second language. Yeah, so when he wrote some of the dialogue in Wounds is horrible, <laughs> but the movie is pretty good. This, you know, so I, I it's, this, we've talked about language barriers before, and you can yeah. definitely tell when a non-native English speaker uh, tries is writing to write in English, English dialogue. It sounds. I mean, weird. it's just like us speaking. Sometimes it sounds a bit off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I don't know what uh, what words to ch- ch- choose. Damn exactly. it! Now I forgot it again. <laughs> but I think the actresses, anyway. the four actresses, pull off um, all of it. Com- amazingly even like most of them i hadn't really heard of before this movie um 
You Crystal, haven't heard of one of them, no. Yeah, well, two of them. Crystal Reed, no. who plays adult Beth, she was before that in Teen Wolf, and I was like, is that the same person? But yes, it is, apparently. Yeah, and she's done a bunch of TV afterwards Yeah, as well. she's still doing TV. She's, uh, she's better in TV this star. than Teen Wolf, just saying. <laughs> well, she, yeah, well, she's a little bit older. Uh, yeah. But then also Emilia Jones from Coda plays yeah. Young Beth. Plays Young Beth, which uh, I think we'd mentioned before. We mentioned it in Coda. I was like, I recognize exactly. her face. Exactly, yeah. But then I must have forgotten that because I looked it up as I was watching the movie. Like, what did they do after this? And I was like, oh, she was in Coda. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously she's... She's better in Kona, but she's good she's, in this as well. Yes. You know. And I think uh, Taylor Hickson playing young Vera also does a great job. And then Anastasia Phillips as adult Vera. She's less, I suppose, because she doesn't have as much screen time. No, and she's mostly just screaming and getting beaten up. Yeah. So, so Or just freaking out, because as an yeah. adult, she's mostly freaking out. But I, I still think she's doing a great job. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, no one is bad in the movie. No. It's just some of the dialogue. It's, yeah, it's just some of the dialogue. Like, I, I, that's, that, that and some of the sound effects, that's all I can complain about. Because at one yeah. point when adult Vera is being, like, beaten up by an invisible force-ish. Yeah. Because you hear the, the bitch Beth slaps. can't really see it. Yeah, you like, hear the slaps and it's like, oh. Psh, 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 yeah. Psh, 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 it's like it's cartoon terrible. slaps. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> but other than that, I think it's fucking amazing. Yeah, it is. And like we said, there is a bunch of jump scares, and rewatching it was a little much. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not just jump scares. No. And also, um, the jump it scares. It has something more. I don't know why, but only, I only reacted to one of them, and my reaction was, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, the other ones I, I didn't they, really react. Well, they get yeah, me every the time. Some of them are. Point. Oh. What? What? I didn't. Well, I was... One, the doll in the mirror at one point. Yeah, that one did scare ah, me. Okay. Yeah. There are but... some that are, you know, uh, they're they're valid. They're not fake outs. There's some valid yes. jump scares, and that's always fine. But there are a bunch of yeah, like dolls and oh, you know, oh, you see the <laughs> headlights of a car, but the music goes. Bwah! That's the one I was like, like oh, oh come on. Yeah. Like, why? No why much, did you put yeah. that music there? If you just skipped that, it would have actually been better. <laughs> yeah. Just just a little bit. You didn't Maybe, even have to have something. any sound. Just have the lights. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, where I think he was trying to, like... He was trying to do it like a generic horror yes. movie. To kind of throw you off. So, But I won't... That, that does not excuse the excessive use of bad jump scares. I think. <laughs> no, no. That's true. <sighs> but all, all in all, yeah. Um, I, I'll say this. It does not deserve a 44 meta score. No. That I is think... too low. But I, I think also, like you said, there's a lot of, uh, even even though you might not think so, I think that you, as a viewer, you need a lot of like background information to fully appreciate the movie. So someone who might not be aware of Martyrs or didn't like Martyrs, or this is the first time they're watching a Pascal Ogier movie, and they're just like reviewing it on face value, um, I can see them not liking it. I... That's why the scores are all over the place. Like if you if you look on like user reviews or, or on Letterboxd, there are some who gives it like fours, but there are a lot of like twos and two and a half. Yeah. I sorted you know, the IMDB uh, user reviews by date. Yeah. Most of them are either ones or tens. <laughs> yeah. And well, the ones yeah. who say ten is like it's it's Pascal, he's great. I can't really complain. Like it's it's breathtaking and gripping and vile, violent but like good you know yeah and then you have the ones who are it's transphobic and ableist or it's just it's just someone called it um ableist what because he has a crutch i suppose <laughs> okay. i don't know one of them is just complaining that it's just a, a story it's not a ghost story like it's set up to be it's just a story about girls being abused but there's there's ghosts up yeah, here. That's the thing. There's ghosts in your giving mind. It, giving it a one isn't fair because no. that's just you didn't understand it. And and yeah, okay, transphobic. I can understand that in today's. Well, I want to I want to discuss that. I want to discuss that because I can see how they see that. I can see how they see that, but it's also weird because whenever they portray 
uh, a trans person as, you know... A bad uh, guy. A bad person. A bad guy or a murderer or whatever. It's always transphobic. Yeah. Um... So and, I mean, and, and and you know the the only times it's acceptable to have a trans person in your movie or in a TV show is if they're in a, they're perfect and they're always happy and they're the ones who under, they understand everything or and even they, if they're they in guide the, them in the right way like uh, uh, or if or if they're um, uh, put down because of their being transgender uh, yeah exactly like the the perfect example the I haven't watched much of it but I've seen some of it the what's it called the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt the the black guy who's yeah, I only like, watched like two episodes some and then I gender gave up. thing going on with him. It's like like yeah, but guess what? Trans people are just people. Yeah, they can be assholes as well. I don't see why we just have there, to portray them there, as good. There is a reason though that people like to mention. It came up for me at least. That's where I learned about it. It's from when the J.K. Rowling shit happened. She uh-huh. wrote a book after all the Harry Potter books where she yeah. made the bad guy, who is a man, he's a murderer, and he decides to... Uh, the only way to get to his victims is to dress as a lady. That's the only way he can fool them. So he's a, tra- a cross-dresser, but he's not, transvest- he's not transgender. Mm-hmm. But he... Acts he, and u- she, he, she, he uses yes. transgenderism to get to his victims. Yes. Yeah, well, well uh, thing is, yeah, well, that that's, that makes the character transphobic. That yeah. doesn't make the book transphobic, does it? People think that makes J.K. Rowling transphobic. Uh, she, you know, there's all the she's uh, expressed I mean, she's also, her thoughts on yeah the way she which, kept going when she got that criticism. Obviously, sets her like she's not really right with everything she's saying. I'm not gonna no, defend her. Uh, I'm not gonna you're not gonna defend her completely. I I I I don't think she deserved to like be ostracized from everything uh, forever. No. What she said is partly valid because of what she she has experienced in her life before everything. Sure. Um, but, y- you know, she she was a little blunt in her she expression. She could have uh, thought through her, her writing <sighs> yeah. a few times. <laughs> Especially That's the not- tweets. Yes. Okay, yeah. And, and <laughs> but, just keep going on. Like, just yeah. Give it I up. see mm-hmm. how people feel like that's because that's obviously used in real life as well. And it puts trans people in a bad lighting when men mostly choose to dress as women and do horrible shit. Because, well, what? You can't judge me. I'm a trans person now. Yeah, but that's not the case in this. No, that's the thing. That's what I'm getting at. That's why I see what people might think. It's it's transphobic. Thing oh. is, this dude isn't doing that. We yeah, don't even know why he chooses or they choose to dress feminine. Exactly. If anything, there's you no know, si- there's no explanation to that. That's just, I guess it's for the family dynamic. Yeah, um, and I and I say like because we're supposed to like n- n- uh, you know normalize transgenderism yeah. like it, which it, it's you and, know it's a thing you know it's nothing to like I, I think I think we're past. Yes. Thinking that's weird. Yes. Um, because you know he sure is. I don't care. Yeah, it's we're past that. But I also think that we need to get past the fact that trans characters has to be like perfect. Yeah. Or, or at least, or at least not perfect, but, no, but, but at least be like good. Just like it there are male and bad female well. bad guys, there yeah. can be transgender bad guys. There can yeah. be bisexual trans guys, uh, trans guys, bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> Too many terms now. Um, the thing about Incident in the Ghostland is that the character's gender is never talked about. No, it's, it's never not brought discussed. up. It's not a a reason they, for anything. That's they, just a costume choice, basically. They mention it once uh, when the police find them in the field by the road. She says. Um, she says a witch and an ogre. Oh, yeah, and, and then, but then she—that's just because it's you know that's fairy tale terms. Yeah. but then she says. Then Vera says, says two dudes two in a candy guys, truck, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the only time they like talk about it. But I think she says two. No, oh, maybe she says two guys. I think she says two guys. Because but that's how that's she sees to, it. Yeah. But again, like this dude could just like wearing a wig and a long cardigan whatever yeah like, that's not what makes him a murderer or her no, or whatever them yeah. them they yeah it's so it's, I, I, it doesn't I think it's it doesn't add or give in anything 
It doesn't add or take anything from the character. It doesn't add or take anything from the story. No. It's just... It's you choosing to see that as something yes. bad, you know, towards, I mean, towards if, transgender if people. I mean, if Pascal wanted... I'm just going to say Pascal because I can't say his last name. Yeah. If he wanted, he could have just as well casted a woman. Or he could have yeah. just as well wrote this character as not wearing a wig. Yeah, and a or, or if he was transphobic, he could have gone more into it. Like, yeah. oh, I am your like d- doing the because the 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 guy who plays the 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 woman or whatever the witch the person <laughs> yeah the witch um he's not trying to like pass as they say he's not no. passing that he uses his regular male voice and everything yeah I think you can even see like some stubble at one point so it's not like he's trying to um is that the one yeah. called elegant man. Might be, yeah. No, that might be in one of the dreams. There's a bunch of elegantly clothed people. Because I find, I find uh, the fat man. Oh, there, well, candy truck woman. Okay. I don't know if that's the the credit in the movie, but that's the credit on IMDb. Yeah. Uh, either way, either way, like like he could have made it more overtly, like this is a trans person. Yeah. And it's they are bad because they are a trans person. If but, if but, if. But they that don't. Doesn't or he happen. Knows, doesn't. Yeah. We have like like, so like I, I, say, th- I think it's no, a stretch. Yeah, there's no <laughs> that's just a choice. Perhaps also because I don't know, back in twenty eighteen it was more of a strange thing to be transgender. Yeah, a lot has changed in the, the last year last few years, yeah. Yeah. And that just adds to the the, the weirdness of this these candy truck people. Yeah, you, you first of all, they're driving a candy bad. truck. The hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't um, think I don't think that's a valid like anything to be honest. No, it uh, doesn't I, have anything to do with the story. So I don't think that's a valid or, or at least like, to give I, the I movie would, a one. No, yeah, of, of course. Like if you want to call it transphobic, sure, but I wouldn't say it's transphobic. No. Uh, um, and I wouldn't anyway. say it's also just a, a a movie about watching girls being abused. Because first of all, we don't really get no. to see the, we, well, the, the, well, we do the worst see a lot of kind. Violence against. <laughs> the worst kind of of, of uh, no, we don't see those abuse, parts, but that we see a lot of trying to terrible say stuff do. happening. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. And but that's just his style. Like you know, he wants he, the, he wants to creep you out. He wants to really like rub it in your face. Like this is horrible. What's going on? Yeah. Um, it works better, I think, in Martyrs. But it's still it's still valid in this movie, I think. Yes. Um, because of the the point he's trying to get across. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's. Uh, I think a lot of people just couldn't stomach the fact that it's very violent, and they hadn't yeah. seen martyrs before. Yeah, it's the they same didn't martyrs. realize that that's the style, I suppose. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of like more martyrs has in general a high a higher score on. All the places I've looked, um, but there's the same thing there. There's a lot of people that say, "Oh, it's an amazing movie. It's a, you know, it's a work of art and everything." But there's a bunch of like ones and twos saying like, "It's the most horrific thing I've ever seen. It is just like torture porn." Yeah. Um, because yeah, you they, they honestly can't they can't handle it, and I understand no, that. Sure. But, you know, the, there is more to the movie than but just it's, that. But it's it's not human centipede if I say that. <laughs> well, for for me, because I'm weirdo, uh, at least the first human centipede also had there is a there is a point to the mo- to the sure. movie. The first one, sure. The, the, se- the second I, one, though. One day I'm gonna write that video essay about the human centipede trilogy. Uh, I know what do. you think about the second one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I th- I think we've mentioned it in a lot of episodes. That yeah. is torture porn. <laughs> it is yes. That, that's not a movie. That's just fucking sick. Yeah. This is at least uh, th- both incident and ghost and martyrs at least have a a proper story that if you just look at the movie and actually watch it, you will see it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, <laughs> or maybe we should do an episode on Human Centipede. No, I've trilogy. said that you cannot make me watch them again. Ah, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Unless, yeah. unless we get an. A crazy amount of patrons asking us to do it, and I'm gonna yes. set like I need like 500 people. 
Yeah. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> this is gonna be the clip then because I forgot to do it in the last episode. Yeah. Unless um, we have 500 new patrons telling us that we have to do an episode on the Human Centipede trilogy, I will never ever in my life rewatch those movies. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. You know, since I handle a patron, I'm gonna say 500 is a little much. But here's my pitch. <laughs> um, if we get a bunch of patrons. Telling us to do an episode on the Human Centipede trilogy, I will force my sister to rewatch one and two, and then watch number three for the first time. Yeah, because I never uh, watched number three <laughs> because I got so mad at the second one. Um, and I'm gonna force her to listen to my uh, my theory that the uh, the Human Centipede triptych is actually a beautiful work of uh, abstract art. Okay, that's that's. From yeah, so if you want to hear my <laughs> thesis on why human centipede is art, real art, uh, check us out on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with Incident in a Ghostland until then. Thank yeah, you. Sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, that's I think that's we're gonna wrap it up. Yes. There. Um. Honestly, all our talking about Incident in Ghostland and Martyrs as well. To really understand it. You need to watch them. Yeah, even if you know the stories, watch the movies with yes. this knowledge in, in your head and you will be able to see past the violence. Be aware that Martyrs is in French, so there will be subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that shouldn't be a problem, though. If you enjoy a film, you should you be able to actually watch it enjoy a film, you need to look past subtitles. Yes. Um, and also, you know, yeah, stay away f- yeah, stay away from the remake. Yeah. Um, it's terrible. Um... Yeah. It's just bad. I mean, honestly, I didn't technically finish it because I fell asleep. So <laughs> obviously, it wasn't horrible enough or horrific enough for me to like. Oh, oh, I, I it was bad enough that I actually fell asleep during the torture, and that's not a good sign. No. <laughs> so yeah, well, that's gonna have to be. It. Yes. Thank you so much for listening, or thank you so much for watching us. Um, like I said, if you want to hear us talk about the human centipede in excruciating detail. <laughs> Or just want to hear other episodes. <laughs> of course. Or get the exclusive episodes, yeah. Um, we get the monthly commentary tracks. We're doing the Evil Dead remake this month. Um, check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Like I said, there's links down below uh, in the description, wherever you're listening to this. Um, and um, uh, you, you'll, you'll get all that stuff. But other yeah. than that, if you just want to listen to the free episodes, they're, they're, they're out on the internet every, every Saturday. Um, and uh, just click follow or like or whatever you do on the platform you're listening to this. Yes. But other than that, we'll see you in the next episode. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye. The Spoiler Cast is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It's hosted by Tobias and Rebecca Vidin, produced by Tobias Vidin. Executive producer is Annika Vidin. Direction and sound editing by Tobias Vidin. A big thank you to all our supporters over on Patreon for keeping this show going. Rasmus Jonsson, Laura Kinney, Mom and Dad. <laughs>